I'm Kelly Goulet, I'm the National Policy Advisor at Palliative Care Australia um, and I pay my respect to the traditional owners of the land um, on which we're, we're meeting today. So it's, I think we've had some great speakers to kind of introduce my topic and it's great that we went from um, you know, palliative care within an aged care context um, and then brought in the paediatrics because that's often, it's often forgotten that uh, we, we um, support people from perinatal palliative care to um, palliative care at the um, older end of life, natural ageing, so it's, it was a good point, thank you, and I'll bring it up again. Um, so who are we, for those that aren't familiar, we're the National Pink Body for Palliative Care, surprising. Um, um, we look at the National Palliative Care Standards, we maintain and, and update with the sector. Um, we work for both consumers and clinicians and services, so we have member organisations in each state and, and territory, um, and then we also have the clinical um, organisations as our affiliate members, so Paediatric Palliative Care Australia New Zealand, the Australia New Zealand Society of Palliative Medicine and Palliative Care Nurses Australia, so we've got a very broad um, depth of whom we represent and then the, the depth of that as well. Um, there's all our details and I, I, I'd be um, put on the stake if I didn't mention Palliative Care Week, which is coming up, so get involved. Um, there's lots of collateral to download, social media competitions, etc. and it's all about um, what matters most and thinking about what matters most for, for you and these are some of the posters, so um, it's not all the, the, it's not all gloom and doom. Um, and it's about having the early conversations to ensure that you've got the best opportunity to get what matters most to you at that um, point of um, care at the end of life. Um, so just a few, um, a few things I'd like to start with in terms of what is palliative care. Um, so the, the goal is to optimise quality of life um, till the end of life. Um, it's person and family centred. Um, it's provided for active progressive advanced disease with little or no prospect of cure. So it is life limiting illnesses. It's not just um, at the, the end of life period. It's a lot broader, broader time period and it's for um, a lot of, lot of different people. And there is specialist palliative care and there is generalist palliative care as well. Um, and just we're big on um, identifying to people that palliative care is a human right by the World Health Assembly, but it hasn't been enshrined in Australia in legislation yet, um, and that was four, four years ago now. Um, so what palliative care um, isn't, um, it's not only available to people who have cancer or malignancies, um, it isn't only for older people, um, it isn't only the last weeks or days, um, palliative care can be received by many people for many years actually. Um, it's not only about pain relief and um, it's not only after treatment ends or people have given up hope. Um, so we need to be talking more about what palliative care is, um, but we need to be talking more about what matters most. And last year, um, part of our team went around Australia um, and filmed a video, Rural and Regional Australia, um, and asked the community what matters most to them and why they should um, have these conversations. So I'll just show you a quick video. I told my wife to put me in a pine box and bury me in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have. Uh, we haven't made all of the arrangements yet, but we're getting close. Haven't come up with any answers. I don't really know what would happen. We have, and we've, then we've talked about we'll it, and we, yeah, we've seen uh, funeral directors, but we haven't actually signed up to anything yet. Talk to your families. It's, it's something you can't avoid. You know, it's going to happen regardless. How it happens is up to you. And I just would say, do it. Plan it. Talk about it with your families. I think be realistic, you know, it's going to happen. I'd like to, to be buried where we are now, which is closer to home, um, and maybe picking a plot, you know. That's not something that people look at, but uh, yeah, that, that's probably something that's probably worthwhile. There's lots of information to process, and it's good to get as many people on board as possible, so we're trying to have lots of family discussions. A month ago, I was overseas with my two children, and I did have a conversation with them about the end of my life. If you want to mourn for one day, that's fine, it's up to you, but really, honestly speaking, the next day, the sun will rise, and I really would like, I would like you to celebrate the great, great life I had. Oh, uh, look, I might well, after this conversation, I might well consider it, and look at <laughs> some plans. <laughs> Introduces the Dying to Talk campaign, which is our consumer-facing 
um, campaign to normalise discussions and, and to um, support people in having discussions far earlier when they might think that they're required. So this isn't about advanced care planning. Um, it, it, these tools and things may form part of an advanced care planning process, but we want people to start talking far earlier than like right now. Um, you know, not when you're 65, 80, 70, not when you already get sick, um, not when you've just had a death in the family, but um, any time about just what, what's important to you. And it's an ongoing conversation. It's not one, we all change our minds. So this is our Dying to Talk campaign. Um, and then we did a discussion um, starter pilot with the Country Women's Association of Australia in 2017-18 because we wanted to raise awareness um, in rural communities but we wanted to use the local infrastructure um, and build the sustainability and local champions within community to be comfortable in getting together and, and having these conversations. Um, so we had a, a wonderful group of, a group of um, ladies help us out and I'll just present some of the data today for you. Um, so I've got a couple of quotes from the, the evaluations, which I found um, it's always better to hear from the people that um, participated. Uh, we developed a facilitator guide to help the, the local champion um, have the discussions and work through our materials. Um, some other supportive resources, um, a video, some videos, um, our discussion starter, which um, we've got copies of and I can show you those um, later afterwards. Um, we've got some discussion starter cards. Um, identified the facilitators and champions through the CWA structure and we had the sessions occurring in Northern Territory Victoria and Tasmania um, within um, communities and then we had a larger big group session in New South Wales to see how that worked as well. So we had um, 250 people participate during the pilot and we got evaluations back from um, around 117 which is wonderful. So if anyone here today from CWA, thank you. Um, so the, the big results for us was that there was a reduction in people that were uncomfortable talking about dying um, after attending one session. Um, and the session was 45 minutes to an hour with uh, women in, or members of the branch in the community over a cup of tea. So this is not anything that needs to be done with a clinician or um, uh, it, it's, it's quite easy to do. Um, and we were, we were really happy with that. Um, so specifically, there was also 61% of participants um, had previously spoken about the kind of care they wanted at the end of life. Um, and of the ones that, the 39% that hadn't, they will now talk to someone after um, the session. So um, that's also a great thing to also prompt people to start talking about it with friends and family. Um, the number one reason for people saying they hadn't had the discussion previously was that they were far too busy. Um, and that's what we hear all the time at Palliative Care Australia, I don't have time for that. Or I'll, I'll wait till it's an issue, I'll wait till I get a diagnosis, I'll wait till... But usually when that happens, you're, in a, you're getting so much other information, you're in a bit of a crisis mode, um, and it, it becomes more emotive and it, it, it's a harder discussion to have at that point. So if you've started having the discussions earlier, when you get to that point you can add more information and it's a bit easier. Um, you know, people are quite open with talking about having a will now or donating your organs, but there's a whole lot of other things that, that you need to think about and that your family needs to know as well. In case you're in a situation, um, even in an accident, particularly in farming and rural communities, where you can't speak for yourself, but you've had those earlier conversations. <coughs> so I'll just give you a couple of examples of um, people as they went through the process. Um, we, um, this, this woman was, was comfortable talking about dying before because she wanted to be prepared and she had already spoken to someone but she had nothing in writing. So the importance of putting things in writing after you've had discussions um, can't be stressed enough. Um, and there is a point where people feel more comfortable and that's not something that can't change as well. So there's this fear that if I put it in writing now, it, that will be the case forever. But, Having the discussions is just the start and then you need to, to think about where that needs to go from there. Um, this woman um, was somewhat comfortable talking before the session. Um, then she explained this experience about um, how her husband was diagnosed and it was a very rapid decline um, and death and that they didn't talk about it. They tried to be positive but there just wasn't the time and it, there was so much else going on and, um, you know, and this is this crisis situation. Um, they also still have not spoken about what they would also like 
um, but they've hinted to their, their daughters that they would like to and, and she was really saying that she wants someone to bring it up with her because she doesn't know how to bring it up with others um, based on her experience and after being at the sessions it, it helped her go to back to her daughters and say, you know, I want to talk about this because of what happened with your father. Um, this woman was very comfortable talking about dying before um, because she wanted choice and she wanted to prepare her family. She hadn't spoken to someone already um, because her family were uncomfortable. Um, so she was grippling with, do I bring it up and make them uncomfortable or, or do I just put it in writing and hope that someone sees that? So she was going to use a discussion starter to go home and try and have a a um, death over drinks type situation where you, <laughs> you go home and you say, All right, we're talking about it, grab a bottle of wine, let's, let's just have a nice chat. Um, and, and this person was comfortable beforehand because it's part of life, hadn't spoken to someone um, and believed that there was no real need because she was in her 40s. Um, but we all know things happen and, and it's just that normalising the conversation. So again, this is not advanced care planning, it's just talking about what you might, might what you might want and particularly in rural remote locations it's it's how far would I go to receive treatment or um, care off country you know I might go for this but I'm not going to go further for that and then how am I going to get back and do I want to be at home for a long period of time or do I want to go um, and receive extensive treatment um, the CWA itself was a great location to have these discussions because you know they're your friends um, uh, so 83% of respondents were very comfortable, which was, was a great outcome. It's often much better than someone like us coming in and saying we're hosting a session, come talk to total strangers um, about what you might want at the end of your life. And 86% believe they would think more about it because of the, the discussion starter that we have, which is, which is wonderful because um, it, that's, that's the whole idea to start that discussion. You mind it? Um, so this is the discussion starter here. 74% um, said it was a, a great, great resource. Um, we also have a, we also have a card game because some people find the discussion starter itself um, being a booklet a little bit confronting. Um, whereas the card game, you can put the cards into piles of what you would like to discuss, what you'd never want to discuss, and what you'll think about later, and then just address a card pile. We've found it particularly useful in um, indigenous communities and um, people with. Um, cognitive impairment to be able to do the, the card game um, and then have someone pick those cards up. So where to? Uh, we're reviewing all of the materials um, and developing a, a, web, a website because we want to reach um, more groups and build local champions to have these conversations. So we're relaunching soon um, for an additional 12 months. The structure of that we're still determining. We'd love to hear your ideas. Um, so it's about getting local organisation, whether that's a bowls club, a residential aged care service, a general practice, RSL, Probus. Um, we don't really we don't really mind who wants to say I will have one of these sessions in my community. Sessions are generally we say 25 people because after it gets bigger than that or less, even five is great. Um, it it becomes harder to have you know deep and conversations um, and we're at because of the way we want to do it and we want to collect the information and the data um, we are offering small uh, reimbursements of, of the cost of having to hire a, a place or put on a cup of coffee or and things like that but also to provide those evaluation results so um, my, my colleague Tim here he's um, going to be running that program um, and when we relaunch it we'd, we'd love you to keep your eye out on it because the more people we can get having these um, just, just chats in your living room, um, the better um, in our view. Um, we do have other resources. So we have an um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander version of the discussion starter and the cards, which we developed with Cats and them a couple of years ago, and they've been um, used quite extensively throughout Indigenous communities. Um, we do have a website as well, which you can actually do the discussion starter online and print it, save it, email it, take it to your your health professionals or your family members. We also have the card game online, which has been quite um, useful. And how am I going for time, Ma? Going okay? Going okay? Um, I'll talk in the end about another one then. Oh, I am at the end. Um, and we're also at the moment piloting um, we're at the research point, uh, piloting an app that we've developed with the RFDS um, to use in their remote fly-in, fly-out clinics. Um, so the app will be obviously on an iPad or, or what have you, and it's for the staff of those um, 
flying clinics to have the discussions with people in very remote communities and then have them go home with a bit of a pack to, to think about it and then come back and, and follow up the discussions. And the app's been developed to work offline um, and just the RFDS clinicians identified that in their fly-in situations, they're usually developing, um, dealing with such um, kind of critical and acute things that they don't have the, the time to start the discussions. And so we've, we've helped develop that app with them, which is great. And we've had, we've had the Rural Health Alliance on our um, working group for that. And we're also doing another one um, for staff within aged care settings to have the discussions with clients with um, mild to moderate dementia and cognitive impairment. So we're doing that with um, Dementia Australia. So we're trying to, um, in the end, it's, these are just conversations. Um, they are hard to have, but you have to have them and uh, you can have them at any point in time and they can be small. It's just like, what would you want? And then you shut it down and you bring it up again. Um, you have it at a pub. There's death over dinner, there's death cafes, there's <laughs> drinks over death. Um, if you don't want to use the word death, you don't have to because it's, it's, you're not actually talking about death. It, it's, it's before that as well. It's what kind of care do you want? Do you want music playing? Do you want fresh air? Do you want hospital? Do you want home? What do you like? It's just about you. So the CWO was a great pilot. We're expanding that and we'd love to hear your thoughts on how to reach our community because we want it to be a sustainable model. Um, for a long time. Yeah. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Kelly.